Hello friends, the pollen grains are formed within anther of a stamen. Upon dehiscence of an anther, the pollen grains are released. They are transferred to the stigma of a carpel. The agents of such transfer could be air, water, birds, insects, bats, etc. This act of transfer of pollen grains to the stigmatic surface is called pollination. Upon landing on stigma, the pollen grains germinate. Emergence of one or more pollen tubes from a pollen grain is called pollen germination. A pollen tube is an extension and protrusion of an enzyme, the inner wall of a pollen grain. Following pollination, whether a pollen grain germinates or not depends upon various factors such as compatibility, hydration, nutrition, temperature, etc. Papillae of stigma secrete exudase in most carpels which help pollen grain to germinate. Such exudates are rich in lipids, phenols, free sugars, amino acids, peptides, proteins, water to nourish pollen tube growth. The aim of this session is to study pollen tube growth on stigma. The objectives are to learn the role of pollen grains in events leading to fertilization in a flowering plant, to know how to prepare a stigmatic mount to study pollen tube growth on stigmatic and stylar tissues. Also to explain the role of stigma during pollen germination. To conduct and demonstrate the experiment we require freshly plucked open flowers within 6 to 24 hours of enthesis. We may choose any flower but those of portulaca, china rose, datura, petunia, lilies, grasses, cereals. It is suggested that the cut stalks of the flowers be kept in a beaker filled with water till the flowers are used in our experiments. Slides and cover slips, petri dish, watch glass, cotton blue stain, needle, forceps, brush, compound microscope, blotting paper and razor blade. To observe pollen tube growth, we will first pick up a flower with the help of a forceps and remove sepals, petals and also the stamens. So, these are the petals which we are uh, removing and now we have to remove all these anthers. Basically what we need is the stigma alright. So, we are going to remove all these stamens and as you can see these are the stigmas and this is a part of style. So, what we are going to do is with the help of the scalpel, we will transversely cut the stigma and we are going to place it on this micro slide. We should take measures to prevent over exploitation of experimental material. Now, we will put the stigma and a part of style in a small beaker containing hot water for 15 to 20 minutes to make the, so this we are placing in the hot water where we are going to place it for 15 to 20 minutes in order to make stigma soft. After this, we will transfer it to a watch glass. Now, to this watch glass containing stigma with a part of style, we are going to add 1 to 2 ml of cotton blue which is the stain and we will leave it for 3 to 5 minutes. Now, after 5 minutes, we will pick up the stigma with the styler tissue and we will keep it on the glass slide and we are going to put the cover slip. But before that what we are going to do is
So, now this is the stigma with the portion of a style as you can see. Now, we have to remove the excess of stain with the help of the blotting paper. like this and with the help of this needle we are going to just cut this stigma because now we have to observe the germinated pollen grain that is we will be looking for the pollen tube. So, we have removed the cotton blue stain. Now, we are going to put one or two drops of glycerin which is the mountain. So, we will put uh, one drop more of this glycerin and now with the help of this needle, we are going to lower down the cover slip very gently, so that no air bubbles are trapped. And actually now we should give a gentle pressure with the help of the back side of this needle. So, it will be something like this. Right, so that the stigma along with the portion of the style gets little pressed. Again we will use this blotting paper to remove any kind of excess stain or the mountain medium. Now, we are going to focus this slide under the microscope. we will take the observations. We may observe a mass of stigmatic tissue principally papillae. A papilla is an elongated cell with a distinct cuticle. Many pollen grains can be observed adhering to the papillae. Some of the pollen grains can be seen to be fully turgid. Some of them could be seen with protruding pollen tubes through germ pores. Such pollen tubes could be seen traversing through the surface of the stigmatic papillae. Eventually, these pollen tubes entrench the stylar tissue. Now, what will be the result? The stigmatic tissue has attached or free pollen grains. Some pollen grains have germinated. Generally, one pollen tube emerges from a pollen grain. Length of the pollen tube can vary. Pollen tubes stain blue. Recapitulation. Development of mature male and female gametes ensures syngamy during sexual reproduction of a flowering plant. Triple fusion in addition to syngamy is characteristic of any flowering plant. The female gamete that is the egg cell is well entrenched within an ovule of an ovary. The male gametes must reach an embryo, embryo sac to ensure fertilization. The pollen grains are the sites of male gamete formation. The pollen grains are transferred to the stigma of a carpal via pollination. Recognition of a compatible pollen grain by the stigma is very vital to further events leading to fertilization. Now, try to explore the answers of following questions. First, why do flowers of a plant produce a large number of pollen grains, but only a few ovules. Second, how are pollen grains transferred to stigma? And last, what is the role of stigmatic papillae in pollen tube formation? The learning outcomes that can be achieved through this session are differentiates phenomena and processes based on certain characteristics and salient features such as 
reproduction in organisms, reproductive parts of commonly available flowers, autogamy and geotonogamy, inbreeding and outbreeding, in vitro and in vivo fertilization, genotype and phenotype etc. Relates processes and phenomena with causes and effects such as pollination, pollen germination, stigma receptivity and pollen viability. Explains processes and phenomena such as pollination, double fertilization. Elucidates processes, phenomena, relationships and applications such as post fertilization events. Makes illustrations, label diagrams such as reproductive parts of flowers, pollen germination on stigmatic papillae, callus deposition. Demonstrates skills in using apparatus, instruments and devices for solution preparation, slide preparation and staining for study of the structural organization of pollen tube stigmatic papillae. Draws conclusion on the basis of data collected in activities such as only one pollen tube reaches the ovule, exhibits ethics and values of respect for life and environment by taking measures to prevent over exploitation of experimental material. Thank you.